My name is Norm, a software engineer on the .NET team here at AWS. In this video, we're going to talk about using Amazon DynamoDB with .NET. If you haven't used DynamoDB before, it is a NoSQL database that doesn't require you to define a schema. You just define the keys for your tables. It is also fully managed, which means there are no machines to maintain. It is also easy to scale. When you create a table, you just specify the read and write capacities to reserve for that table. These values can be raised or lowered after you create the table as the scaling needs of your tables change without taking the table offline. To use DynamoDB with your .NET applications, you need to add the AWS SDK .DynamoDB v2 NuGet package. The v2 refers to a large service API change done several years ago. The v2 suffix was added to the namespace in the package to allow applications using the original API to continue to work alongside the new service API. With the DynamoDB NuGet package, there are three different APIs you can use to access DynamoDB. The first is using the service client, which is what we also refer as the low-level API. This API provides full access to the DynamoDB API. It does require you to write more code when accessing DynamoDB because you need to explicitly tell DynamoDB how to store every piece of your data. The second API is the document model. With this API, you use a document object to store and retrieve your data. This API works really well when you're storing unstructured data, for each item could have completely different attributes. The third API is the data model API, where you model your data as .NET classes and use a context object to save and retrieve your data as instances of your typed classes. Now let's take a look at these three APIs in action. Here we are in Visual Studio, and I have a sample application that is going to use all three different APIs. Each of these samples is going to st store a user in a user's table in DynamoDB. I can create my user's table here in the AWS Explorer by right-clicking on the node and say Create Table. I'm going to specify name as Users, and then I need to define the key for my table. And a key is made up of a hash key and optionally a range key. You would use a range key if you needed to provide query capabilities within the scope of a hash key. In this example today, I'm just going to set a hash key of ID and leave its type as string. We also would define the read and write capacities we want to reserve for this table. I'm just going to leave that the default for our demo today. I could continue further in this wizard to also set up indexes for our table, but we're not going to do that today and just push create. Our table is going to be created, and we can just start running through our sample application to see how that works. So I'm going to push F5, and we'll step through our code. And the first one you can see is our low-level sample. In the low-level sample, we create our service client, which is, has all the APIs to DynamoDB. To save an item, we're going to call the put item operation. And we're going to use the async version. For the .NET SDK, we support .NET Framework and .NET Core. In .NET Core, we only support the async operations. So by coding this in async, I can use the same exact code in both .NET Core and .NET Framework. The put operation takes in a put item request, and here you can see is how we set our data up. First, we say which table we want to save our item in, and we create an item, which is made up of a dictionary of string and attribute values. Now, the attribute value is an interesting object because that's what tells DynamoDB to be how you want to store your data. For example, here is us storing the ID, and we're setting the S value on the attribute value, which tells DynamoDB that we want to store this value as a string in the system. And we've done the same for first name, last name, and address. Now, active, we have said we want to store that as a Boolean, so we need to call the bool property. Number of children is a number, so even though it is a string here, we're setting the in value, which tells DynamoDB this is a number. And that's going to allow us, when we do query operations, to use query operators that are appropriate for numbers. We then have our interest, which is a list. It's a list of attribute values. And this is where things can get interesting, because those attribute values can also have lists and maps underneath there. And you can imagine how that would be able to store more complex structures. In our example here, though, we're going to just store a list of strings. So each one of those attribute values, we're setting the S property. And then skills, we're going to set as a map. And a map is a dictionary of string to attribute values. 
And here we're setting all those as numbers. And again, you can imagine we could also be using lists and maps to create complex structures there. So let's just go ahead and step over this. And now our item has been saved in our table. In fact, if we go back to our Dynamic Explorer, we can see we have now saved our record in the table. Now to get our item back out, on the Dynamic Client, we're going to call the get item operation. And it's going to take in a get item request. And we specify the table name. And we're going to turn on consistent read for our demo application. Because in our demo application, we want to be able to read the data that we just saved. If you do not have that requirement where you don't need to read data that was just saved, you can set that to false. And by setting that to false, that cuts in half the read capacity units consumed by your read operation. And then we need to specify the key. This is how we know which item to load. And it is, again, a hash map or a dictionary. It is a dictionary because we could have specified both a hash key and a range key. In our example, we only set a hash key, so it's a dictionary of just one item. And again, we're saying it's a string and passing in our value. So we'll pass that. And now we've got our item. And we can print that out. If you look in our console, we can see here is all the data that we just stored in DynamoDB. Now to delete it, we just call the delete item operation. And it's like the get where you pass in a table name and the key information. Now our item has been deleted. If we go back and rescan our table, we can see our data has been removed. So that's how you can use the low level API to access all of the features. But you do need to specify how exactly you want to store all the data on that attribute value. Next, let's take a look at the document model API. So I'm going to continue running, and we'll step into the next sample. On the document model sample, you can use that by including the namespace Amazon DynamoDB v2 document model. It still uses the service client, but it wraps around it by this table object. And the table object is what we use to load up all of our documents. So first, we're going to create that by calling the load table method, which doesn't load the data. It loads all the metadata for our table. It loads the keys and the indexes that have been configured for our table. We pass in our service client. We tell it what table we want to load. This third property is telling which conversion algorithm to use when converting the data from the document down into that put item request and setting the values on the attribute value. Now, the reason we need to set this is when DynaDB first launched, it contained support for strings, numbers, sets, and binary. And so when you were stored booleans in the old version, they were stored as numbers, zeros, and ones. Later, DynaDB, to DynaDB added support for booleans, lists, and maps. So to add support for storing your data in there, we added the new algorithm. But we needed to make sure you set that on there to say you wanted to use that, so any of your previous code that was saving the values as numbers would still be able to access that. Now here we have our table object, and we're going to start creating a document. And you see in the document, we can just use our indexer to set all the values. And here we aren't saying which is a string and which is a number. It's just using the type they are in .NET. So here's all of our string properties. Here's just setting our Boolean and our number. And then our interest is taking in a list of strings. And that conversion algorithm is going to go figure out how to convert those into the attribute values um, data types. For our map, we actually create another document and set all the values there. And then we set that document onto the parent document. And that's how maps are done. Then to save it on the table, we call put item passing in a document. Now our object is saved. And to get it back out on the user table, we just call get item and we pass in our key information. We don't specify what the key is because when we loaded the table up, it pulls in all the metadata for us. So we've got our table. And here's our document, and we can print that out. And we can see, again, it has the same data as the first demo. And then to delete it, we just call the delete item passing in the value for our key. And our item has been deleted. Now let's check out the data model API. With this one, we're going to use typed classes to represent our data. So in here, I have written a class called user that represents all the data I want to store in my user table. Now by default, this API is going to use the name of the class and the name of the properties to map into DynamoDB. 
But I don't want to create a class called users for one single user. I just call that user. But I can set this dynamic table attribute to map that table to this class. And the same with properties. Here I've renamed my key to be email, and I've added the property to remap that to the ID property. For all the others, I'm just going to use the default names for those. If there's any properties I don't want to save, like this full name, I can add the ignore property on there, and it will not be persisted to DynamoDB. So let's go back to the table and see how we use this user object. So first, we're going to create a context object, and that takes in a config. And here on the config, you can see I've turned on consistent read, because for our example, we're going to read data that we just saved. And we're going to also say we want to use the latest conversion algorithm. Next, we're going to create our user's object. And we're going to set all the values just like we would any other .NET class, using object initialization in this case. Once we've set that up, on our context object, we call save on that. Let's go ahead and skip to there. And now our object has been saved. The context object used our class to figure out how to store the data back into DynamoDB. And I can get that back out, calling the load method, which takes in the user generic so it knows which table to go pull that information. And it takes in the key information. So here we step through. We have now a fully loaded user object. We can expand out. And you can see here's all of our data. And we can print that out again. And see, again, we're seeing all that same data. And then to delete it, we call the delete method, passing in the generic so we know which table we're talking about, and the key information, and pass that. And now our, our user has been deleted. So you can see we have all these three different APIs to be able to access DynamoDB, depending on your needs. Now, another common use case that we hear is people would like to store JSON documents into DynamoDB or get JSON documents back out. So let's take a look at how we can do that in this other demo. I'm going to set that as my startup project. And this is a web API project. And I have a control user's controller. And in that controller, I'm going to use the document model API. On the document model API, you can go get my document. And on those documents, it has a to JSON method. So this is how you can convert the data you get from DynamoDB into a JSON document. And we can do the same thing the reverse way. So here, if I take in a JSON object on a document object, I can convert that to, from JSON to a document with that static method from JSON. Let's go take a look at how this works. So I'm going to start this up. And now it's loaded. I'm going to use Postman to use those APIs. I've saved a couple requests here. So let's expand that out. And first, I'm going to post a user. So here is, I'm going to hit my web API, the user's controller, and I'm going to do a post. And it's going to post this body. I'm just going to send it to JSON to there. We'll push send. And you can see here at the breakpoint that I got my JSON object, and we're going to convert that to a document. And then using our user's table object, we're going to go save that in there. So we didn't have to do anything with the data other than convert it to a document and then save it in there. And then we could get the same data out by calling get. And here on that, we're going to pass in the ID of the user we want to get. We'll do that. And our web controller, here's our user. We're going to go use that as the key information, pull that out, and then we're going to call the to JSON on the document to convert that to a JSON document. And here you can see is we got our JSON document back from our web app server using our DynamoDB API. So there you can see how you can also use JSON as well with DynamoDB. There you can see with the three different API options and the ability to use JSON, you have a lot of options on how to use DynamoDB in your .NET applications. Thank you for watching.